Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Brent Venables, the Oklahoma Sooners, wrapping up their first scrimmage on Friday in the early reports out of the first scrimmage of fall camp. The Oklahoma defense dominating. Now, I think that there's obviously a couple of different ways that you can look at it, right? The defense dominates. That means the offense didn't have such a good day. I think a lot of Oklahoma fans crushed it on the message boards and in the comments section. Hey, this reminds us of what we would read about this Oklahoma team in the early 2000s, a program that was led by the defensive side of the football. You look at why Oklahoma decided to bring Brent Venables back to Norman heading into the SEC. They wanted this program to be led by the defensive side of the football. And it makes a ton of sense, right? You look at the teams that have dominated the SEC over the last decade, the Georgia Bulldogs, Alabama, obviously coached by some of the best defensive minds that we've seen in the last 50 years of college football. But more importantly, these are two programs that they don't have bad offenses by any means. We know we have to have a good offense to go win in the SEC. Both of these programs are headlined by elite defenses over the last 10 years. And you look at Oklahoma heading into the SEC. This is, at least in my opinion, how you would want this program to look heading into the SEC. Now, I think another kind of takeaway I would have is that if we were to preview this Oklahoma defense versus the Oklahoma offense going into a fall camp scrimmage, I don't think there's a single Oklahoma fan that would have expected the Oklahoma offense to dominate the defense. You just look at a pure matchup standpoint, this Oklahoma defensive line is one of the better units that we'll see in the SEC, one of the better units we might see in the country going up against an Oklahoma offensive line where they're still trying to figure out what the rotation is, what the best five is going to be. It's a lot of new faces on the offensive line from a pure matchup standpoint. We would expect the Oklahoma defense to have a day. And so we're going to talk about the Oklahoma offense, talk about what we kind of heard out of the fall camp scrimmage. That being said, if I'm an Oklahoma fan, I'm not panicking about the offense. Yes, we want to hear the offense take strides over the next couple of weeks heading into 2024. This is how we all expected this scrimmage to go. And I think Oklahoma is in a good spot, especially when you look at the landscape of the SEC heading into 2024. Really excited to get into a few of the bigger storylines we heard coming out of the scrimmage before we do it, as always. Just want to say thank you to you guys and to the Oklahoma fans. Many of y'all who've been rocking with the boys for a while know this is a program I've loved talking about and the amount of support that you guys continue to show in the comments section. It truly does mean the world if y'all do enjoy the content. Consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, would love to hear how you guys are feeling in the comments section. I know these scrimmage reports kind of garnered a lot of different reactions. You might not totally agree with some of my takeaways, and that's perfectly okay. That's the beauty of college football, but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. Without further ado, let's get into this one. Let's start on the defensive side of the football. Danny Stutzman pick six. He's one of the best linebackers in the country, if not the best. That's not necessarily surprising. I think the biggest takeaway is I'm continuing to buy stock in this Oklahoma defensive line, really just this Oklahoma front seven in general, where we know Danny Stutzman is going to be a guy. I'm really encouraged from the things that you're hearing about Kip Lewis or Lewis Carter or Kobe McKenzie. At the end of the day, we feel good about who that other linebacker is going to be next to Danny Stutzman. But I think the big story is not only how good this defensive line can be, but how deep this defensive line is. I mean, PJ Adebar up to 6'4", 260 pounds. It kind of just read an article about him force feeding himself during the offseason, trying to get that weight up. And what he says is that, hey, I have a lot more power in my hands. We all know PJ Adebar is one of the most juiced up athletes off the line of scrimmage. The speed and athleticism and how explosive he is, that's going to be his primary calling card. But if you develop a P.J. Adebari that has big-time power in his hands and has the ability to shock offensive linemen off the line of scrimmage, get a little bit better in the run game, I truly think you're looking at one of the better edge rushers that we'll see in all of the country. So you look at this front seven and say, we're deep, we're talented, we have multiple guys that will be playing on Sundays over the next couple of years, and you combine that with depth, that's what the best programs in the SEC look like. Now, back in the secondary, I think one of the more disappointing news is Gentry Williams continues to struggle with that shoulder injury. Look, we all know a healthy Gentry Williams can be one of the better cornerbacks in the conference. He's got to stay healthy, and you hope over the next couple of weeks, you just kind of continue to give him that adequate rest, and he can figure out the shoulder injury heading into 2024. Again, very, very talented cornerback. 
We got to get him on the field 100%. I think you feel good about the depth behind a guy like Gentry Williams. That being said, I think we know the best version of Oklahoma secondary is with Gentry Williams healthy at the cornerback spot. Oklahoma defense dominates. We've talked extensively about this Oklahoma defense. We think it's going to be a really good unit. It's progressively gotten better as Brent Venables has not only changed the culture of this defense, but more importantly, brought in the talent he needs to dominate in the SEC on the defensive side of the football. You combine Brent Venables going into year three, that's a really important conversation that I feel like gets left out. You see new defensive coordinators and defensive schemes really hit their stride going into year three. There was a lot of changes. There was a lot of miscommunication and guys just not necessarily having a full grasp of the, of the defense in 2022. It got better in 2023. A lot of these guys coming back for 2024, you feel that a lot of these players now are fully confident in this defense and what they're going to be trying to do. It's just going to make this Oklahoma defense better. You return, what, nine out of 11 starters on the defensive side of the football. A lot of reason to really believe this defense is going to be a top unit in the SEC. Now, you go to the offensive side of the football. This is where I want to kind of primarily spend the rest of our conversation one, we talked about the matchup. We are still trying to figure out the offensive line, what the best five is, rotating guys. I think Jacob Sexton played both guard and tackle. There are still some growing pains on the offensive line, which was to be expected when you bring as many new faces to the Oklahoma offensive line as Brent Venables did. We expected there to be growing pains, and you're still trying to figure out what that rotation is going to look like. When you lose that much experience on your Oklahoma offensive line, there's going to be – Again, growing pains. And so we kind of expected that, but also kind of factoring in. I mean, obviously no Andrew Anthony, no Nick Anderson, no Jaleel Farouk, no Jaden Gibson. There were a lot of difference makers on this Oklahoma offense that were not playing in the scrimmage. And so, again, there's reason to understand why Oklahoma's offense struggled a little bit. And again, you're supposed to expect the offense to struggle early on in fall camp. You very rarely hear reports that the offense gets the better of the defense during the first two weeks of fall camp. It's going to come together. The big storyline, Jackson Arnold, three turnovers. That's one thing that I think all Oklahoma fans agree needs to get cleaned up. You look at this Oklahoma team. If you're going to have a program that is run through the defensive side of the football, you need a quarterback that's not going to turn the football over. Punting is fine. If we trust this Oklahoma defense, you go back to Michigan. Michigan was very conservative on offense last year because they knew they could rely on the defense. They wanted to make sure that we're not putting the defense in bad spots. They limited turnovers. They punted when they needed to punt. That's kind of what you want to see from this Oklahoma offense. Now, I think this Oklahoma offense has a ton more juice than what Michigan did on offense last year. I think they have the capability of being a much better offense. That being said, the turnovers are probably something that you really want to avoid in 2024. And again, it makes sense, right? You have a young quarterback that's still trying to understand what he can get away with at the Power 5 level, specifically in the SEC. There's going to be some growing pains for Jackson Arnold. Good thing you have a couple of games for Jackson Arnold to kind of settle in with that offense. A couple of the bright spots that I would say. Gavin Sawshunk, we know, is going to be running back one. We know he's going to be one of the better backs in the SEC. Javante Barnes looking probably the best he's had since his true freshman year. That's a massive storyline. I think a lot of the Oklahoma fans who've been rocking with the boys for the last 24 months know I was a huge fan of Javante Barnes after that freshman year. If you were to ask me who was going to be the running back one after the 2022 season, I'd probably point to Javante Barnes. You getting Javante Barnes back as – a potential difference maker in the running back room when you're spelling Gavin Sawshank, I think that can be massive. We think this Oklahoma offensive line will be able to run the football. Last year, they had some solid pass protectors. I don't know if it was quite as physical of an offensive line as you would like. Jacob Sexton, Jake Taylor are going to be full-time starters. I expect this Oklahoma offensive line to get a run game going, and that is the number one thing that you want to look for when you have a young quarterback in Jackson Arnold, if you can give Jackson Arnold a run game, you feel really good about what this Oklahoma offense could be. Again, I think my biggest takeaways is we expected this. You know what I mean? I don't think it's time to panic about the Oklahoma offense. If you were to ask us a week ago how a scrimmage between the first-team defense and first-team offense would look, we would kind of say it's probably like that. I think the biggest thing is – you don't want to have three turnovers in a scrimmage. We're going to read the uh, fall camp notes after the second scrimmage and hopefully see that the turnovers were less of a problem. 
I think for the Oklahoma defense, you kind of know what you have. You want the Oklahoma offense to slowly come together. A lot of you guys said it in the message board. If you can have an elite defense with just a very, very solid offense, you're going to win a lot of football games in the SEC. And quite frankly, that's the recipe, right? Georgia, Alabama, they've had elite, elite defenses with offenses that can move the football and play complementary ball. That was kind of what you saw with Michigan last year as well. The elite teams that you see win at the highest level in college football normally are led on the defensive side of the football. And it sounds like that's what Oklahoma is going to look like as a program heading into the 2024 year. We'll cut it there again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. Would love to hear your thoughts, opinions in the comments section. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later.